Hello and welcome to Digital Farm TV Rural News. I'm Andy Walker. Low rainfall and heatwave conditions across major summer crop planting regions are likely to lead to a significant decline in summer crop production, according to the Australian Bureau of Agricultural and Resource Economics and Sciences. A Bears Executive Director, Karen Schneider, said this week that poor seasonal conditions had reduced the total summer crop planting area by 15%. Forecast summer crop production would fall by 25% to a total of 4 million tonnes in 2013-14. Grain sorghum production is forecast to decline by 36%, rice production by 22% and cotton by 8%. A Supreme Court trial with implications for the use of genetically modified crops in Western Australia kicked off this week, Countryman reports. On the first day of the landmark case, lawyers for Kojanup farmer Steve Marsh claimed neighbour Michael Baxter had failed in his duty of care to ensure his GM crop did not affect their client's property. Steve Marsh's farm lost most of its certified organic status after the alleged contamination and he is suing Baxter in a move that has grabbed worldwide attention. Marsh is seeking about $85,000 in damages and a ban that prevents Baxter from planting and harvesting GM crops. Watch this space. The Australian Veterinary Association said this week that cuts to New South Wales government diagnostic staff had created delays in diagnosing a mystery illness killing hundreds of cattle. The Department of Primary Industries was investigating cattle deaths in the west of the state, according to the association. Senior Veterinary Officer Graham Bailey said 3D syndrome affected animals experience drooling and diarrhoea before death. It was vital farmers reported unusual animal deaths to their private or local land service veterinarian so the extent of the problem could be measured and solutions identified. Meat and Livestock Australia reports that 2014 is shaping as a most interesting year for Australia's lamb industry. Medium term prospects for increased supply hinged firmly on seasonal conditions, while export potential for the industry was extremely robust. After a record supply and export year in 2013, overall production volumes are expected to drop back in 2014. Export markets, however, would continue to increase their share of production, maintaining the long-term trend and underpinning an expected price rise. The federal government may have denied SPC Arbmona a $25 million assistance package, but shoppers have pulled out their wallets to support the fruit packer, according to the Sydney Morning Herald. SPC Managing Director Peter Kelly said sales last week had increased by more than 50%, helped by a social media campaign that encouraged Australians to buy the company's products and share product images online. The Shepparton community and SPC workers had been overwhelmed by this support and expressed their heartfelt thanks to everyone involved. The National Farmers Federation has called for appropriate action to address the severe drought that many farmers, their families and communities were enduring. NFF President Brett Finlay said this week he welcomed the Prime Minister's acknowledgement of the severity of the drought gripping much of Queensland, Northern Territory, New South Wales and South Australia. But while potential improvements to farm household income support had been raised by Tony Abbott, the NFF said farmers needed a broad range of immediate targeted relief measures. The NFF call was broadly supported by veteran Liberal Senator Bill Heffernan. Grain Corp has announced mass redundancies as it restructures part of its manufacturing business, according to ABC Rural. The Eastern States grain handler said this week it was investing $125 million to upgrade its edible oils and spreads manufacturing plants in Victoria. As a result, 130 jobs at its Brisbane plant would go from early 2016, but Grain Corp said it would try to deploy staff to other areas. The concentration of work in Victoria would bring processing closer to the source of the grains. Well, that's it for Digital Farm TV Rural News this week. I'm Andy Walker. Look forward to your company again next week. Bye.